This presentation will be about demonstrating resource wise system where we use a certain tools to be more resource wise in our production system. OK, so the tool that we're talking about is life cycle assessment. So then life cycle assessment is a quantitative analysis tool. We use it to evaluate environmental impacts of product or service throughout its entire life cycle. We do it by compiling input and output. And then using the input and output, we evaluate the potential environmental impact. What we do with LCA, we take life cycle perspective and then it will cover broad range of environmental issue. So there are different purpose of LCA studies. First, we can use it to compare products. For example, we have regular milk or organic milk, and then we wonder which one of these two product that is actually environmentally friendly. We can also identify an environmental bottleneck. We call it environmental hotspot. So then let's say we have product life cycle start from the raw material extraction and then production, transportation, consumption, and then end of life. And then using life cycle assessment, we can tell which part of the supply chain that caused the highest environmental impact. Other than that, we can also compare improvement option. So for example, we have a production process that use a certain type of plastic. And then we want to use different type of plastic. We want to replace our PVC with LDPE or with polypropylene. And then we test these two different scenarios and then we see which one will give higher environmental benefit. There are four different stages in the LCA. First is goal and scope definition and then followed by life cycle inventory and then life cycle impact assessment and interpretation. So in the first stage, in a goal and scope definition, we decide our system. Is it a product? Is it service? Activity? Whatever it is. And then we define the purpose of the study. Are we going to compare two different products or are we going to find an environmental hotspot from a certain process? And then we set the system boundary. As you see here, we have scope one, we have scope two, and we have scope three. So then there is a direct uh, impact from the direct emission. So what happened only from the manufacturing side, or we can also expand the system boundary. We include what happened in the upstream from the raw material extraction, transportation, and so on. And we can also include the downstream activity, which take into account the waste management of the product that being disposed of. And then we also define our functional unit. So then functional unit is, is how we express the result because we want to be able to compare our result fairly. And then we, we, we want to be able to express the result uh, in a way that represent the function of our product properly. So for example, if we want to compare the packaging made by plastic and the packaging made by glass for milk. And then we say that the functional unit is per liter of milk being held by the container. And then in this stage, we also define what kind of data that we need, what assumption that we make and what kind of limitation. The next step now is life cycle inventory. In life cycle inventory stage, we construct the flow model. So then it covers the whole life cycle stages of a product, raw material extraction, transportation, production, and then we collect all the data that we need. For example, we need 200 gram of PVC. We use 20 kilowatt hour of electricity. We generate 20 gram of PVC waste. So we list all the input and the output and we quantify everything. Next step is something that we call life cycle impact assessment. So based on the input and output from life cycle inventory, we are going to express all the input and output in the term that is more meaningful. For example, 
climate change impact, uh, acidification potential, eutrophication potential. So what happened in this stage is uh, we take all the inventory. For example, we have 50 kilogram of CO2, we have 45 kilogram of CH4, and then we have 0 0.2 kilogram CFC. And then from this inventory, we do classification, meaning we classify different type of emission into same category. So then, for example, CO2 and CH4, also CFC, three of them causing climate change impact. So then we put these three things together into the same box. And then in order to be able to uh, sum up all this emission, then we need to convert it into same unit. In this case is CO2 equivalent. So then we have to convert CH4 into CO2 equivalent, and then we also have to convert CFC11 into CO2 equivalent. So then we use characterization factor. So at the end, we will have climate change impact that is caused from different type of emission. Last step is interpretation. So here we analyze the result to make a conclusion, and then it will depend on the goal. Do we do product? product comparison, do we do hotspot identification, or do we do scenario analysis? And then now we move on to the example in the forest tree sector. So here we do LCA to thermally modify wood. So then thermally modify wood is essentially, it can be soft wood or hard wood, and it goes through thermal treatment to improve its properties. So then it will last longer when we use it, for example, in our building. So first we define the goal and scope. So we quantify environmental impact of one meter cubic thermally modified wood that it lasted for 25 years. Here we use soft wood, which is pine. And then the system boundary is cradle to grave, meaning that we start from raw metal extraction until the end of life of the product and we want to identify environmental hotspot and here we also do some scenario analysis and then next in the life cycle inventory we collect the data first is uh, it's called foreground data so it's a primary data including material input electricity waste and transportation and then we complement this with background data which is a coin van and then we also use report and literature and we do impact assessment. In this case, we're only focusing on one impact category, which is climate change impact or global warming potential. And then in the interpretation, we want to see which one that caused the highest environmental impact. And we want also to compare different scenarios. So this is how the system boundaries look like. So we start from the production. This is the... Um, raw material part, production and harvest, and then it's being transporting, saw milling, drying and planning, transported to thermal treatment, transporting into the consumer, which use it as decking installation, and then there is a use and maintenance, and then end of life. So this is how the LCA result look like. On the x-axis, you can see the different part of supply chain start from the production and harvesting, and then it ends in the end of life management. So then with this baseline scenario, we can see that for every one meter cubic of this uh, thermally modified wood, it emits 240.5 kilograms CO2 equivalent. And then when we talk about the uh, hotspot analysis, we can see that the thermal treatment causing the highest environmental impact. So then it costs more than 120 kilograms CO2 equivalent, which almost, no, it's, it's not even almost, it's more than half of the total environmental impact. So then next, after this, because we want to know what happened to our model, if we apply different type of scenario, then we do scenario analysis. We do two type of scenario analysis. The first scenario is scenario A. In the scenario A, we change the end of life management. In the baseline scenario, we do incineration.
to the wood that is being disposed of. But then in the scenario A, we want to know what happened if those wood being landfill instead of being incinerated. So then we can see here in the scenario A, which is the red one, when we compare with the baseline, which is the yellow bar, we see that the um, landfilling costs much worse environmental impact than incineration. Because if we compare these two impacts, landfilling costs 8.5 times higher impact than baseline scenario. And then in the scenario B, we try to address the hotspot, which is the thermal treatment. In the baseline scenario, the source of energy used for the thermal treatment is natural gas. And then in the scenario B, we replace the fuel into wood chip instead of natural gas. So as we can see here in the scenario B, we see a lot of reduction in the thermal treatment. So then the total environmental impact in scenario B is now 157 kilogram CO2 equivalent. So then what we can learn from this um, LCA calculation is that first, we know the baseline situation of our production process. So it gives us uh, a new insight on our process. And then second, it provides knowledge on which part of the supply chain that causing the highest environmental impact. So then if we want to make a change, then we will we need to address the part where causing the highest environmental impact. In this case is thermal treatment. And then another thing is that it also provides us an insight about how different type of source of fuel can change our environmental impact. Thank you very much.